So in the previous few lessons, we have already talked about different things about functions. In the last one, we're going to talk about the inverse function. So let's get started. I'm starting with a basic you know, function f from a to b. It's a bijective function. And then f inverse will be from b to a. Just think about the word inverse and what it means. Now f inverse b will be a provided f a equals to b. Now this f inverse is the inverse. So how do we define it? We have this f from a to b. So a is getting mapped to b under f. So we write b equals to f a. So under f inverse, b will get mapped to a and we will write a as f inverse of b. Now clearly we understand that whenever you have the function f inverse from b to a, so b is the domain, right? So each and every element of the domain, which is b, is associated with its pre-image under f inverse. Now let's look at two things which are very important. The first one is pre-image, the next one is bijective function. So the obvious question is, why do we need it to be a bijective function? So look at this one. We are talking about a function after all, right? So it needs the association of each and every element of the domain with its pre-image. Now, whenever you think about basically a functional thing, you know, associating any value to an output, you want the existence of that as well as uniqueness of that. Now, this existence will give you, the uniqueness is going to give you injectivity. Together, it has to be a bijective function. It's very important that you understand this. Unless it's a bijective function, we don't talk about the inverse. So now that we understand the concept, next question is, how do you find f inverse? So suppose this is a function. You have y in terms of x. You find out x in terms of y. So suppose x is equal to a function of y, say gy. So what you do is you interchange x and y. And then if you get y equals to gx, you are going to put g as f inverse. Now these are the steps. So let's see an application and we see how we can incorporate. First of all, this function, sometimes you can see that whether the function is bijective or not, it can have some problems. So start with bijective functions and if they are not bijective, try and restrict their domain or impose some conditions so that they are bijective. But once their bijection is there, I'm going to talk to you about how to find out the inverse. So what was the first step? You have y as fx. Find out x in terms of y. So we can write 3x squared equals to y minus 2. So x squared as y minus 2 by 3. So x is this. The second step was we interchange them. So I can write down y as root over x minus 2 by 3. Now this y is nothing but f inverse x. So that's it from this video. I hope you understand the definition and application. And also remember the condition of bijection because in the next chapter when you're going to learn about inverse trigonometric function this is going to be very very important.